in the application section of the instruction manual for this uh, Heathkit IM12, IM58, uh, there's a diagram that talks about the typical setup for a uh, amplifier test scenario. And this particular picture, it caught my eye because when I looked at it, I realized that I have all of these uh, pieces of equipment um, sort of as displayed in the picture, you know, not literally, but they're, they're sort of like an effigy of the old pieces of equipment from Heathkit. And I said, wait a minute, I think I could reproduce this exactly as it appears in the photo, uh, except for the amplifier where I'd use my old Dynaco uh, ST70. So this is what I have set up for the demonstration. There's going to be all vacuum tube, no solid state components for all pieces of equipment throughout this test. I have on the left the IG72 audio generator that has been used in the uh, restoration of the uh, harmonic distortion meter. And just to the left is the um, uh, ST70 amplifier, the one I use here in the shop for experimentation that was restored, the one from Mike. Here is the uh, harmonic distortion meter, the IM12. That is the meter that we're going to be using, obviously, for this test. And finally, I have my uh, Heathkit O12 uh, laboratory oscilloscope. And this will be the output oscilloscope for the test. And while it was difficult for me to get everything in this shot, we can see here, if we look in figure 17, we can see all four of those pieces of equipment here on the bench. So the first piece of gear in all this is the IG72 signal generator, and it is set up for 2 kilohertz sine wave, and it is on the 1 volt full deflection, and it is currently pushing out uh, 600 millivolts uh, from the front. It is on um, external, and it is not perfectly impedance matched to the ST70, so we are getting an inaccurate reading here. And here is the ST70 amplifier. It is currently warming up right now. I'm going to give it a few minutes to stabilize. You can see that the right channel is shorted to ground, and the left channel is going to be the channel that we're testing with. I have already checked the bias on both sides. I find it important that even if you are not testing both channels, uh, the uh, outputs of both sides should uh, be connected to a uh, resistor nonetheless. Uh, impedance match. So I have 200 watt 8 ohm resistors, one on each channel, even though only one channel is going to be tested. And here's what the resistors look like that plug into the back of the amplifier. This in turn is plugging into the harmonic distortion meter. Uh, we could see that I currently have it on the uh, voltage setting in the 10 volt range. It's reading about uh, 7.9 volts RMS. I've also verified this as well. To be correct, this is the amplified signal coming out of the ST70. It's coming in on this jack over here uh, from the amplifier. It is then going out on this jack over here uh, to the oscilloscope for viewing. The oscilloscope is not required for any of this, it's optional. With the input plugged into the oscilloscope, uh, currently what we're looking at is the input. So it's passed through right now. Uh, in the set level position and in the voltmeter position, uh, there's no um, filtering of any kind going on in the harmonic distortion meter. So we're just looking at the signal passing all the way through back out to this oscilloscope. And this is the point where we bring it all together. We're going to be testing this single frequency at this single power level on the uh, harmonic distortion meter here the Heathkit IM12, and so I begin. I'm gonna take this out of the voltmeter setting, and, and we can see that this went way off the rails. And the reason is, is because we have to turn down for our set level, right? So we were, we were overdriving the uh, front end on this meter here, right? Because what we want to do is we have to make sure that the set level sits at um, 100%. This range knob here needs to be on one of the two set level locations, and it's sitting here at a set level location. That's just fine. We have our uh, meter is now sitting perfectly at 100%. We can see that the sine wave has stabilized, and now I could go again, because this is again in, in pass-through, 
uh, sitting at set level, I could go and change this however I like it. So uh, I found the horizontal was fine. I'll bring my vertical back to where it was and everything is good. Um, 2000 is an interesting frequency because this range goes from 200 to 2000. And this range goes from uh, 2000 to 20,000. So what I will do is I will go, first of all, I probably just want to get this in the middle before I begin, if only to, to illustrate this. So I'm just getting that knob up to the middle there. It's not part of this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn this on. Now watch what happens because just by bringing this into circuit, will null out at least part of that signal, I expect, to a degree. Yes, very little, right? And we see that the needle dropped here ever so slightly. But as I tune in on it, right? We can see the sine wave is getting smaller. And as the sine wave gets smaller, we can also see that the needle is dropping, right? Eventually, this oscilloscope is going to have trouble picking up on it. And eventually, obviously, this needle is going to go all the way down to zero and it's going to start bouncing back up again, right? So what I want to do is bring it to that lowest point right there and change my sensitivity down to 30%. At 30%, we could see the needle jumped up a bit. This got a bit bigger. We have a little more room to work. I could go and turn that knob again, and we could see, again, there's very little room to work at 30%, very little bounce. What I can do is drop it down to 10%, and each time I do that, obviously, um, the needle comes up a bit more because the range is a fraction of what we were working with before. The deflection now is only 10% of the total. And again, I can work with this knob. Eventually, there's nothing more I could get out of it. This is as low as it goes. And then I could use the balance knob right here. And we can see that the balance knob has a profound effect. And it goes all the way to zero and bounces back up. And again, we got nothing to work with. So I can bring it down to 3% and then down to 1%. And we could see the noise that's remaining. And I'm going to see if I could get even more dropping out of this. We could see as I tune back off, you could start to see it form again, but I could get it right there. And then once more with the balance knob. And that is as low as I can get it, right? On the 1% scale, I could see 0.12% total harmonic distortion on the signal coming off of this IG72 through this ST70 at this frequency, two kilohertz. And that is the reading that I have. I read the final reading wrong looking through the camera. It was 0.14% total harmonic distortion. So now I'm gonna put this machine safely to full reset by turning this back to 100, this to set level. See that the oscilloscope is now showing the original sine wave again. And everything is back to normal. That was one test iteration. I've doubled the output power and I'm going to restart this procedure with all the settings in place to see what the value is. I shouldn't have to do too much readjusting. So I will take it off the voltage now, which has doubled now to 16 volts. Turning my level all the way down. I bring it back up to 100. Turn it down like that. I can start dropping my sensitivity because I don't expect it to be far off. And now I can make minute changes that may have been And we could see at this power level a total harmonic distortion of 0.32%. Sixteen volts is almost peak power production on an ST70, uh, representing about thirty-two watts. So it did not take long for that uh, resistor. It's a hundred watt resistor to come to full temperature. So I've had to shut it down and let it cool. 
when I do experiments like that, uh, they are of short duration. With the resistor sufficiently cooled, I'll do one more test at 12 watts. This will be uh, kind of the middle of the road for this amplifier's power production, and uh, I should get some time out of this resistor before it heats up again. And we were seeing about 0.26% total harmonic distortion at this voltage. So that's it. That's my demonstration of harmonic distortion measurement using all old school uh, tube equipment and Heath kit measuring equipment uh, from the 1960s. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Thanks for watching.